on those three areas where I've seen you know, humans are devolving a little bit. And once they're, you know, humans are social animals, they're meant to physically interact with each other. And I think with the rise of the social media, there's a lot less of that. People are just like liking their friends' posts rather than actually giving them a hug in person, having that deep one-to-one high bandwidth connection when you're in front of someone. So there's that which slightly concerns me. And then also nature, I'm a big fan of nature. And I think when you're in these environments, if you think most of us were at home and then we're probably staring at the screen while you eat your breakfast, then you go to the office, you're surrounded by all this artificial environment, and then you go home again, you're probably watching the TV. And I don't know, but I kind of sense that you're probably dulling all these senses, your smell, your, your intuition, all of those things as well could be being dumbed down and dulled by all of this technology. And so one thing I'm very passionate about is something I term the lost art of thinking. <laughs> so I find you know the last ten years of being this you know information age where you're just bombarded with all of this information and just you know fake news everyone just believes oh it's on Facebook it's someone's someone's blogged about it it must actually be true and people don't actually really think and maybe ask the question for themselves I mean you could you know something broke in the house back in the day you probably have to work out take it apart work out how to fix it whereas now it's like not saying it's a bad thing but you know my like, 20 year old niece will just go on YouTube and work out how to fix this thing, or how does the car work, or whatever. <laughs> so it's kind of a double edged sword where, yeah, you can get this information really quickly and just be told how to do something, but then I'm sure our neuroscientists here could go into this sort of depth a lot more, but it's the fact that you're not actually using your brain to think and problem solve and actually think of the question for yourself. So don't fall into the trap, lost sight of thinking. <laughs> I think. Can we use um, digitized creative thinking or innovation thinking to actually help keep yourself mentally agile and flexible? And all the rest of it. There's actually studies that um, were done using more pen and paper based innovation training where they found that there was increased blood flow by 8% using MRI studies. And according to, to the, the professor of this research, you know, each percent actually is the equivalent of reversing aging by a decade, mentally speaking. So boom, they, what, they, they got eight years younger, I don't know. Um, but yeah, essentially, so we're like, okay, well, hopefully something that's digital, if, you know, the advantages, and also with AI, is that it's interactive, it's constantly evolving, and it can be personalized, so you don't get bored for free. <laughs> and so yeah, the flip side of addiction could also be engagement. Um, and so can you use, you know, the, the technology in a way to actually keep you on your toes um, into healthy aging, so yeah. Well, not even, uh, because a lot of the discussion in the room when it comes to tech and all that, it instantly goes into software and into the cloud and the maximum in hardware that we're talking about is maybe a mobile phone. Uh, but when it goes down like the, um, the Fitbit and that kind of uh, road, uh, especially in the realm of uh, luxury goods and uh, soft things like clothing, etc., there's actually a big opportunity that isn't really being um, uh, looked at yeah. by those brands, I think. Uh, and in fact, uh, here we're coming back to my little obsession with how circuit boards are made, okay? Uh, yeah. Which is uh, very, very old school techniques that are coming back from the 60s and haven't really changed very much. And I think uh, there's a really big opportunity being missed by big brands uh, to actually look into that and see like, or how can we actually embed a sensor in clothing and like find out uh, what's the yep. neural state or exactly flow and all of that kind of stuff, okay? <laughs> uh, and that's nobody does that because it's not on people's radar in uh, Louis Vuitton or Prada or all of those brands because they're old fashioned people and they're like, oh yeah, we're gonna get this cut really quickly in China uh, and we put a 500% markup and uh, here we go, you know, our, um, uh, uh, our investors are going to be happy because we have big markups uh, and we do a big marketing campaign and that's it. And uh, So that's really a little bit how that works and nobody has the vision to actually invest and understand like how the materials maybe can be smart, you know, can do something new, can go like get give input to all this stuff uh, and I think there's like a really big gap uh, in a way that, that doesn't uh, make you look weird yeah, yeah <laughs> that's exactly, the main thing exactly. people don't want to wear weird yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's not necessarily just like an LED dress you know you light up and uh, in the middle of a party you know it can be a lot more than that <laughs> uh, but uh, that and that hardware is really difficult to make, okay? To like uh, have an industrialization of a fabric that has sensors built in and so on, it really needs investment and science and people like understanding how to make that stuff and 
Uh, yeah, and nobody does it. Okay, so <laughs> maybe tell your clients that might be an interesting area to, uh, to look at uh, and um, and invest in and be the first. Yeah. Was uh, designed to help dementia and uh, dementia patients and Alzheimer's patients. Unfortunately, um, that project almost died a death in the fact that the elderly aren't really at a stage yet, so we're not. Um, what's the right word for this? technologically literate enough mm. uh, to be able to pick up an iPad or a tablet or a phone almost uh, unconsciously every single time. Now I think that you can educate uh, that generation to an extent, but I can't see my grandparents being able to coach a neural network in Python anytime soon. <laughs> the good part about this though is kind of the uh, the pleasure that you can see on the face, like if I uh, got a Skype call with my grandparents, them being able to see me halfway across the world um, is incredible. And it's something so simple and something that we all use every single day in, in business, but it's very, very rare for that generation to use it. So I think it, it can be used for enjoyment. Mm. The flip side of that with children is that I think kind of the school is now becoming more and more um, inquisitive of technology is kind of, uh, when I was at school, we were taught one ICT class every single week and that was it. Now it's, uh, I imagine it's every single day, pretty much. And I know a primary school teacher and every pupil gets a tablet to use every single day. So I think we're getting there, but I think it's still a long way to go. So, the one thing about the classroom of the future is the fact that kids will learn in a different way, not just because they've been using digital tools, but because the understanding of what the child actually needs to understand and learn will change. We live in a Google world. We can Google stuff. Kids know that they can Google stuff. And they don't see why they need to learn things. But apart from the key facts and key dates and everything else, We've also learned a lot about soft skills, about empathy, about communication, about being able to relate, about being able to create and innovate. And the way I see it moving, and the way women see it moving, and some of the more developed countries, in a way, I, I don't mean to say anything back about the education system, but I would say more developed countries. Oh, great. <laughs> um, they are focusing more about developing these new skills. Mm -hmm. Because also, we don't think about what will happen to kids in 10 years. They will live in a different world. Most of the professions that would require to remember A, B, C, D will not be in need anymore. So what are the skills, how we can actually find the skills that can be taught without a screen, or maybe with the help of some interaction, as you mentioned, it helps.